JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 9th. I am Harlamos Pistros, head of research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but one of the other major currencies on Wednesday during the Asian session on Thursday. It gained the most against JPY, CHF, and GBP in that order, while, it, while the currency against which it lost uh, ground was, um, was the Euro. Now, the weakening of the yen and the Swiss franc suggests that markets may have traded in a risk on fashion, but the strengthening of the dollar points otherwise. Now, given that monetary policy divergence is the main market theme nowadays, we believe that uh, a weak yen, a strong dollar, and a stronger euro mean that investors have started adding to bets over higher interest rates by the ECB and the Fed, just, like, just a day ahead of the ECB meeting and two days before the release of the US CPIs for May. This is negative for equities, and indeed, if we turn our gaze to the equity world, we see that all but two of the indices under our radar traded in the red uh, yesterday and today in Asia. The only exceptions we are Spain's IBEX 35 and Japan's Nikkei 225, which uh, uh, ended their uh, trading slightly in positive territory. Actually, Spain's IBEX was virtually, nearly virtually unchanged. It seems that what may have prompted investors to add to their tightening bets, and especially with regards to the ECB, may have been the upset revision of the euro area GDP for the first quarter from 0.3% quarter over quarter to 0.6% quarter over quarter. Although under normal circumstances this would be positive for, you, for European equities, this time around it means that if the economy is not doing as bad as initially thought, the ECB could hike rates more aggressively in order to tame very high inflation. Today, the ECB is forecast uh, to keep all three of its main interest rates untouched, but investors will uh, lock their gaze on hints and signals with regards to how the bank plans to move in the next uh, few months. A couple of weeks ago, President Christine Lagarde said that the ECB is likely to take its deposit facility rate out of the negative territory by the end of September and could lift, if, and could, and could lift it further if needed. Now, given that the deposit rate is at minus 0.50%, we initially believed uh, that this means two quarter point liftoffs, one in July and one in September. And actually, some other ECB officials also supported that view. However, last week, Eurozone's preliminary CPI, CPI data showed that uh, headline inflation accelerated to 8.1% year over year from 7.4% at a time when the forecast was at 7.7%, while the core rate rose to 3.8% year over year from 3.5%. This may have sparked speculation of more aggressive action by the ECB, perhaps that the size of the July hike may be 50 basis points. Even if the officials hike by 25 basis points in, by 25 basis points in July, they could hint a bigger increase for September. The view for a deposit rate for a deposit rate rising 75 basis points by September by September has strengthened even further after yesterday's GDP data. So, a hawkish narrative by policymakers could help the euro recover some more ground, especially against currencies the central banks of which are expected to stay ultra loose, like the yen. However, with expectations becoming more and more hawkish lately, 
the risk for a disappointment has risen and anything serving doubts over what the market uh, currently anticipates could result in a slide in uh, a slide in the in the common currency and maybe a rebound in uh, european equities as this would mean lower bor lower borrowing costs for companies for longer the war in ukraine is still at is still a risk for euro for the euro area economy and that may be a rational reason for policymakers uh, to choose a more careful strategy with regards to interest rate liftoffs. Even if they sound hoggish uh, today and the euro rises, we doubt that it could keep outperforming its US counterpart in the long run, especially after uh, several Fed, uh, several Fed uh, officials expressed the view that they are not in support of a break in rate hikes after summer, at least at the moment, and with the data they have in hand. After all, the US economy is in a better shape than the Eurozone, which could allow Fed officials to keep delivering double hikes, especially uh, despite some worries over a slowdown recently. Now, in order to start uh, examining the case of larger advances in Euro dollar, of longer term advances, we would like to have clearer and more convincing evidence that uh, that inflation in the US is easing and headed back towards the Fed's 2% uh, target. The CPI data we get on Friday, uh, we, which is for the month of May, may be a good starting point to see uh, where inflation may be headed. So, uh, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.